when our uh, RC chairman, Dr. Dhawan, asked us to design a civil aircraft, it was quite daunting because basically NAL was a research organization. And it's for the first time that we were dabbling in actually designing and manufacturing hardware of this complexity and um, sophistication. Nevertheless, we took up this challenge. And right now, we find that at NAL, we are doing everything from basic research to design of uh, such aircraft and a limited fabrication of such aircraft in the country. Cyrus is today a flying symbol of India's first nascent steps in civil aircraft design and development. The project was sanctioned by the Government of India in September 1999 with funding support from the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, Technology Development Board, TDB, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, and the Ministry of Civil Aviation. The Light Transport Aircraft Program, SARAS, is something that NAL took up after a great deal of deliberations. Uh, the main emphasis behind this was to synthesize the 45 years of R&D work done in several areas of aerospace by the National Aerospace Laboratories. At the same time, there was a feeling that the civil aircraft design and development is something the country has neglected. So a mandate was given by the Research Council of NAL, chaired at the time by Professor Satish Dhawan, that NAL should very seriously look into small aircraft design and development. That is how the concept of SARS was born. I must say that NAL has always been a splendid engineering laboratory. In, indeed, in my opinion, NAL uh, has been, almost since it was founded, uh, a superb engineering laboratory. The chief reason for it is that uh, within the same laboratory, there are people who are doing research, the people who do development, and even in its earlier days, people who are doing some kind of manufacture. I mean, after all, large parts of the wind tunnel were built at uh, NL. But uh, after I went there in the 1980s, it seemed to me essential that the scope of NAS activities must be seen as larger. That we should in fact start taking responsibilities for major products, major systems, which we could deliver. One reason for uh, doing that was that it would introduce considerable realism into the research and development that we were doing. Over the last three decades, NAL has developed technologies related to aircraft design, development, testing, as well as certification related issues. NAL's nascent steps in aircraft design first took shape with the design and manufacture of the all-composite two-seater trainer aircraft, the Nala, later renamed the Hansa. Work on the aircraft began in 1991 and the aircraft flew for the first time two years later. So far, eight numbers of the final version Hansa 3 have been built and in over 2,000 hours of combined flying, the aircraft has performed highly satisfactorily without any incident. Besides the confidence to undertake bigger projects, the more important outcome of the development of Hansa was integrated interdisciplinary design approach, detailed structural and system testing, and elaborate documentation. This program consists of developing and building two flying prototypes and one structural test specimen. About 600 SAT to 700 people are working on this program in several work centers. HAL is the premier partner in this program. 
Aeronautical Development Agency is working with us in areas of reliability and safety assessment. Many CSAR laboratories and DRDO laboratories have been working with us. And over the last one year or so, the Indian Air Force, through its aircraft and system testing establishment, has been a great supporter of this program. The Saurus is designed to carry between 8 to 14 passengers, extendable to an 18-passenger variant in multiple modes of operation. To honor the two visionaries, Dhawan and Mahindra, the first two prototypes of the Saurus have been labeled VTXSD and VTXRM respectively. The Saurus project is the outcome of a series of studies in the late 1980s by NAL under the leadership of the late Raj Mahindra. The Saurus will also be well suited to perform a variety of roles apart from air taxi and commuter services such as executive transport, light package carrier, remote sensing, aerial research service, coast guard, border patrol, air ambulance and other community services. The study pointed to the requirement of a fourth level or a feeder airline for the subcontinent. Saurus project goals are low cabin noise, high specific range, operability from high airfields and elevated temperatures, multi-role capability. The noise in the aircraft's cabin in a turboprop aircraft mainly derives from the propeller. Shifting of the propeller to the rear has helped to reduce the cabin noise. Further, the wing has become clean and efficient. Also, the slipstream from the propeller does not clash with any surface behind the aircraft. Since the time of 1980, computational fluid dynamics has played a major role in the design of aircraft, particularly the modern aircraft. Saras aircraft is no exception and this particular division has been very active in providing data not only for the design but also subsequent modifications and analysis. In fact, this is one of the very complex configurations compared even to some of the fighter aircraft. The main emphasis in testing the scaled model of SARS aircraft is to complement the data obtained elsewhere. And in doing so, we have generated the data on a very high load on pressure so that the high Reynolds number characteristics were captured in this uh, trisonic facility. And so far, we have generated something like 500 test followers on this model, and the tests were very much useful for the development of the SARS aircraft. There is a need to generate further data to get the control characteristics of the SARS. Keeping that in mind, a bigger model is now being introduced into the wind tunnel. So far, in NAL's wind tunnel facilities, over 33,000 blowdowns have catered to the need of aerospace vehicles in the country. These include testing of various launch vehicles, missiles, the light combat aircraft and for other aerospace programs. We designed the wings for Saras. Saras wing basically it is a metallic conventional wing with the non-metallic CFC control surfaces like flaps and aileron. Structural analysis and optimization of any new aircraft development is an essential part of the design cycle. Structural analysis has two parts, static and dynamic analysis of entire aircraft in different component levels, subcomponent as well as integrated aircraft. For the analysis purpose, we make a mathematical modeling of all the components and assemble the entire components into representing an integrated aircraft. For this purpose, we use make use of what are called as fine attainment codes. While the static analysis gives uh, an indication of the strength and stiffness of the structure, Dynamic analysis gives the behavior of the structure in terms of the frequencies, mode shapes and damping. And whereas air elastic analysis gives the flutter margins for the aircraft when it is in flight. 
very essential and mandatory part of NERAD aircraft development is the ground vibration test called a GVT. Structural certification is the first thing that one should perform at a ground level test in any aircraft development program. To do this, we start with the design limit load test on major aircraft components. The aim of this test are uh, to validate the structural design and the structural analysis carried out by finite element analysis. And once that is completed, we go to the design ultimate load test, where the primary aim is to establish the load carrying capacity of the aircraft. And in order to achieve these two objectives, we have to carry out structural test on the ground. And you can see in the background a test rig that Structural Integrity Division has developed to carry out the structural test on Saras fuselage. In the first two prototypes, we have introduced composites in the control surfaces uh, for two reasons. Throughout the world, whatever may be the aircraft you, have ta you take, the control surfaces are out of composites. There are two technical reasons for the uh, reasons why they have gone for composites. To maintain the CG locations of this thing, the control surfaces come off of the entire rear file. Any weight imbalance there, it are very adversely affects the CG of the air foils. Despite the fact that the Hansa is made up entirely of composite materials and NAL's contribution in designing key parts of the LCA also in composites, the design parameters of the Saras are different as it is a passenger aircraft involving stringent safety regulations. What we see here is the red home for the uh, NAL's 14-seater Saras aircraft. The function of this red home is to protect the radar, the weather radar located in the nose of the aircraft against environmental factors. And this red home is made out of a special composite construction consisting of the honeycomb core inside and with composite skins protecting it from out. Currently, the design parameters of the 15 meter long, 14.7 meter wide and 5.26 meter high Saras has a maximum payload of 1,232 kgs, allowing for a cruise speed of over 500 kilometers per hour and endurance of 6 hours with a maximum flight altitude of 9 kilometers. Its nominal maximum takeoff weight was earlier fixed at 6,100 kgs before any detailed design was done but NAL has not been able to maintain it in the first prototype. Weight is always a matter of concern in an aircraft because uh, a kilogram of weight increase results in a loss of uh, one kilogram in terms of payload or fuel. Any prototype development program anywhere in the world, uh, the first prototype is always much heavier or heavier than uh, what is targeted, what is the design weight, primarily because the designers tend to be conservative with their design since uh, they are doing it uh, for the prototype. And in our case, since we are doing it for the first time, uh, we were extremely conservative in uh, making our design estimates and design calculations and even manufacturing tolerances. And so the weight of the prototype is higher than what was targeted. But it's nothing unusual. All programs go through it. Uh, companies which have built uh, several aircraft have extensive databases which they use to reduce the number of iterations which the aircraft takes, which the design cycle takes from design to prototype to production standard. We don't have uh, the, the, so that kind of a legacy database and so we have to go through the motions, dirtying our hand, learning as we go along. To start with, even in fuselage, the pressure bulkhead, we are immediately changing to the composites. And uh, some important panels are also we are changing to composites. I am sure very soon we will uh, target the bulkheads and uh, skin panels uh, using composites. But we would, uh, we would like to approach uh, step by step. Immediately our target will be entire empennage, wing, pressure bulkhead, some critical panels of the fuselage will be replaced uh, uh, using composite materials. 
the aerospace electronics and systems division of national aerospace laboratories has been involved in the design development testing and fabrication of the avionics system for avionics electrical and flight test instrumentation system for saras aircraft this mock up has been de designed and developed basically to test various systems like the avionics system the wiring the cockpit evaluation and the problems during the integration like the emi emc problems which can be found on the aircraft since it is difficult to do all the things on the aircraft this mock up will help us to resolve all the issues at the ground here and then subsequently on the aircraft here you can see the communication system the navigation system the attitude heading reference systems the weather radar the ground proximity warning system the air data computers and the stall warning system behind me you can see the cockpit where all the primary flight displays and the various engine parameters and other display systems are installed the pilot sits here and observes all the various parameters during the flight it is like the eyes and ears of the pilot for the first time a sophisticated state of the art software intensive cat 2 autopilot is being designed for sardas this autopilot in addition to incorporating the basic modes also has navigation and instrument landing modes in the system from the past 3 decades nal has been playing a very key role in using simulation technologies for developing various national aircraft programs we have also contributed extensively for lca controller design optimization using the simulator nal was one of the major partners in the development of the light combat aircraft nal has built for the lca an engineer in the loop simulator specifically tuned for control law design activity currently we have set up a research and develop simulator for saras for testing the stall warning system and the autopilot and by the end of this year we hope to set up a training simulator the engineering service division of the laboratory has taken the major responsibility of manufacturing of jigs fixtures tools icy gauges for the saras program and also that has taken the responsibility of manufacturing aircraft components conventional and also nc machine the core thrust of the division is in inspection of various components using high precision measuring instruments like theod light cmns micro height etc and subsequently we are also responsible for this anodizing of metal components cat plating to meet the requirement of dgca standards saras program had many challenges to our division initially we were concentrating on providing ultrasonic inspection support for all the blanks that we received for machining this support we could give with the facilities that we already had at that time however when it came to non destructive evaluation of all the machine components it was a different proposition altogether because the entire facility had to be established to the stringent specification of dgca over the last 4 years 10000 saras components were evaluated with these facilities the design and analysis group is responsible for clearance of drawings right from layout stage up to the manufacturing stage Uh, we also give support to the integration activities test uh, the testing activities and we are uh, we are responsible for generation of loads both for testing purposes and the design uh, design activities and we give a lot of support to the integration activities and uh, the assembly activities uh, in terms of uh, the snack clearances and some of the design changes well my group is the structure assembly group of this aircraft These aircraft consists of many structural components like the front, center, and rear fuselages, and also the wing. These are all assembled on specially made jigs to ensure that they are absolutely according to the drawing and the shape required, and also ensure interchangeability at a later stage. After the different components are built, they are assembled together and then equipped with all system components. the systems include the pressurization the fuel system the power plant fuel control fuel system and the flying control system thereafter the aircraft is checked out and released for flight